So as a sports medicine specialist, it means I have subspecialty training in the arthroscopic or minimally invasive treatment uh, of shoulder conditions. And one of the more common shoulder conditions that we see is something called a rotator cuff tear. And uh, when I'm explaining this to patients in the office, I do a lot of drawings because the rotator cuff, what it is, it's a series of four tendons that insert onto the humerus that help initiate motion. Uh, and so when I'm explaining this to the office, I often draw on the paper on the uh, table in the office. And so in order to help that make that accessible, we've animated that drawing uh, and included it here on the website. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint where the humerus or the head ball meets up with the socket or the glenoid. Sitting up above them are the acromion which is a projection off of the shoulder blade and the collarbone which meets up with the acromion to form the acromioclavicular joint. Now the rotator cuff is a series of four muscles that insert onto the humerus that help initiate motion when they contract. The most superior one is the supraspinatus and it is the one that is usually involved with pathology. Now the great thing about the shoulder is that it's a ball and socket joint with a relatively shallow socket that allows it to have a great range of motion. We can raise our arm all the way above our head. The downside is that we can occasionally bump into the undersurface of that acromion. If we do that enough times or forcefully enough one time, we can stir up some inflammation. Usually this results in just some rotator cuff tendonitis and bursitis, uh, which is just some inflammation in those tendons and the protective covering over them. However, if we do it forcefully enough one time with a big fall, or just repetitively over time, the rotator cuff can tear, and it can pull away from its insertion onto that bone. And when this happens, it's no longer able to as effectively initiate motion. And if this has persistent pain, and especially persistent weakness, we do have the ability to fix this. And we now can go in with a small camera or an arthroscope, and place small anchors in the bone, which allow us to sew the rotator cuff tendon back down to the bone where it came from. And this holds it there until it heals. Once the rotator cuff heals back down to the bone, it now has a better ability to initiate motion and is less likely to have pain and weakness than it was before the surgery.